All right, we're going to quickly go over chapter 10. Uh, some of you may have had this. I think if you just finished Dr. Awuku's class, you may have been exposed to this. Uh, if you didn't, this might be new to you. Let's go to sharing the screen, the PowerPoint, and this is uh, chapter 10. They call it topic 10 uh, thermal physics. Um, and let's just go with the temperature and the zeroth law of thermodynamics. You have two two items, item A, object A, object B, and they're each connected to object C, uh, which is a thermometer. And you can see that A registers 22.5 degrees C, and object B registers 22.5 degrees C. So uh, since they are both at 22.5 degrees, if you put them next to each other, as shown here, no energy will be exchanged between A and B. Uh, when they're placed in thermal contact with each other. They, we say that they are in equilibrium. They will, are in thermal equilibrium. There is no net energy passed between them. If objects A and B are separately in thermal equilibrium with a third object, C, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Now, why do we even need this law? Well, it gives us a, a, uh, a meaningful way of measuring temperature because temperature just from our senses can be very, uh, they can fool you. You can, if you have your hand in a, a cold ice bath and you move it to a room temperature water, it'll feel hot. So our senses aren't necessarily a good measure of temperature. So let's read this. A small hot object makes thermal contact with a more massive uh, uh, object. Uh, so there, what will happen? There will be a net flow of energy from the smaller object to the larger object. There will be a net flow of energy from the larger object to the smaller object. There will be zero net flow of energy. More information is required uh, to determine the direction of flow. Well, the truth is, uh, if it's an equally hot object, then there will be no, there will be zero net flow. Uh, they are both in, in, in equilibrium uh, with each other. Okay, uh, there's the answer. There will be zero net flow of energy. Now, there may be some exchange, but the overall net exchange is zero. Okay, thermometers and thermometer and temperature scales. This here, uh, I have some thermometers here. I have a, uh, uh, let's uh, just show, I, I have a thermometer here. It's a refrigerator thermometer. It was at uh, 90 something because I brought it in from outside. Um, now it's down to 70, uh, 78, and, and this uses a, a, a mechanism where you have two metals that are, uh, have different uh, expansion rates so that as the temperature uh, rises or lowers, the, those, those uh, metals curl and they cause this, this dial to go up or down. And then what I do with my other thermometer it's just a regular oh here it is uh, it's just a regular uh, alcohol thermometer the alcohol is dyed red and as as the temperature increases it expands and it goes up the little uh, the little uh, scale so let's go back to our uh, PowerPoint uh, we, if you put put the uh, uh, thermometer in an ice bath it'll register zero degrees C and if you put it in boiling uh, water, it's 100 degrees C. That's how they set the Celsius scale. Um, the constant volume gas thermometer uh, gives us it, it gives us a measure of reading. And if you use different pressures and different gases, then you can get three different uh, slopes. But one thing that's noticed is that all of those slopes reach to the same point. Uh, all three trials, the pressure extrapolates to zero at the temperature, minus 273.15 degrees C, which is also known as zero Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin is defined as one, 273.116th of temperature of the triple point of water. The triple point of water is where uh, you can have ice, you can have steam, and you can have, or, or you can have vapor, and you can have water. It's the triple point. Now these are some scales. Note that the scale is logarithmic. 
uh, hydrogen bomb, 10 to the eighth uh, uh, Kelvin, interior of the sun, 10 to the seven, uh, copper melts at 10 to the three, water freezes at, uh, 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 you know, it would be 370, uh, 373. Um, liquid nitrogen, and you can see it goes lower. Now, notice that it's logarithmic. Um, okay, the Celsius temperature and Fahrenheit scales, the, um, to get Celsius temperature from the Kelvin temperature, you subtract 273.15. To get Fahrenheit temperature from Celsius temperature, it's nine-fifths times the Celsius temperature plus 32 degrees. Uh, to get Celsius temperature from the Fahrenheit temperature, uh, you subtract 32 degrees from the Fahrenheit temperature and you multiply it by five ninths. Now, if, there's, if it's just a relative, it's, if it's just a delta, you can skip the 32. Um, I have a, a little uh, table here. This is my own table. Uh, some, these are some temperatures to remember. The boiling point of water in Celsius, 100 degrees C, Fahrenheit, 212. Average body temperature is 37 degrees C. That's 98.6 Fahrenheit. Of course, we know the freezing point of water is zero degrees C. And for uh, Fahrenheit, it's 32 degrees F. And the crossover point, where these are the same, they're minus 40 degrees. So uh, if somebody says, well, how cold is it outside? Now, you're never going to get that here in Texas. You go up to Michigan or Canada or something, they, they might say minus 40, and you ask, Celsius or Fahrenheit? Well, it's the same thing. It could be either. Uh, so minus 40 degrees Celsius is minus, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can actually use these data points to come up with the relationship that we, we came up with here. Uh, you, uh, if you, well, I won't assign anything. Uh, all right, uh, thermal expansion of, of solids and liquids. It, you, you can see if you, uh, if you drive down I-10 towards downtown from the uh, medical center, as you go on the upper deck, you hear the, your tires going over the expansion joints uh, because concrete, concrete will expand and contract. So they show two joints here, one for a road and one for a building. Um, these are expansion joints. Uh, basically what happens as you, as uh, if you can think of these molecules as kind of springs in a solid, as it starts to, to uh, get warmer, there's more vibration and the whole thing expands. Uh, so the, the change in length of a, of, uh, is delta L is equal to alpha, which is the coefficient of expansion times the original length times delta T. So L minus L zero is equal to A uh, alpha times the original length L zero times the change in temperature. And here are some average coefficients for uh, expansion for the, some of the materials. Um, aluminum, 24 times 10 to the minus six. Uh, concrete, 12 times 10 to the minus six. And you can, you can see these, you can see them in your textbook. Uh, also, and now gases do not have a specific value for the volume expansion coefficient because the amount of expansion depends on the type of process through which the gas is taken. The values given here assume the gas undergoes an expansion at uh, constant pressure. All right, let's um, uh, now thermal expansion of liquids. Now, if you take this circular washer ring as the washer is heated, all dimensions increase, including the radius of the hole. So as the ring increases, the, the, the hole will increase also. Uh, all right, a metallic key ring uh, of one, one centimeter diameter is placed in a fire and heated up. What would you expect would happen to the inside diameter of the ring as it heats up? Well, we just, we just showed you. Uh, it'll expand as the me metallic portion expands. Um, okay. If a meter stick is metallic and is used for measuring lengths at room temperature, what will be the effect of using the same meter stick for measuring lengths outside on a snowy day? Because the metal will shrink, you're actually going to met the, the uh, outside are going to be greater um, because you're measuring with basically what is a smaller stick. 
Uh, all right, thermal expansion uh, for area, uh, we use alpha, uh, I mean, uh, we use gamma, it's alpha in two different uh, dimensions. Um, so it, we use a, uh, an area, uh, so delta A is A minus A zero equals gamma uh, times the original uh, area, A zero times delta T. Uh, it's just an area, it's just, you've got basically linear expa expansion in two directions and you get the same with uh, volume. You get three, uh, be uh, beta um, is in, in three different directions, so it's three alpha. And so you have linear expansion and volume expansion. Uh, and let's uh, go on. Now the unusual behavior of water. Uh, this blown up portion of the graph shows that the maximum density of water occurs at four degrees C. Uh, now this is very fortunate. So uh, as the, the uh, uh, water, uh, as water cools, it, it starts becoming uh, more dense, more dense, more dense. But once it gets to four degrees, it's, it actually decreases uh, in density, and what does that mean? That means that ice floats, which is very fortunate because uh, it, for things like a lake uh, or a stream, only the top surface will freeze, it'll float uh, because it's less dense, it floats, that's why your uh, ice in your tea glass floats, it becomes less dense and it protects the, the aquatic life underneath the water. So it's very uh, fortunate that that water um, uh, becomes less dense and um, and floats as it freezes. Okay, and there it's showing you that you can see ice on the surface, and there's a fish underneath the ice. It's still living because it, it, it it's protected by that layer of ice. Now, just think of what would happen if it if it got more dense and sank. Well, the the the, uh, the whole riverbed or lake would become frozen, and it would kill all the aquatic life, and we don't want that. So it's uh, very fortunate that that water has this uh, design. Okay, consider an amount of water freshly melted from snow in a pan, and that the water has a temperature of one degree C. What will happen to the water as its temperature is increased to three degrees? Uh, it will expand slightly, it will contract slightly, or its volume will not change, its mass will decrease. Well, the mass isn't de going to decrease. It's an amount of water that, uh, whether it's hot or cold, it's going to be the same amount of water. And let's think about it. Density is equal to volume divided, I mean, mass divided by the volume. So if the mass doesn't change, uh, if the Density goes up, the volume has to decrease, so it's two. Uh, it will contract slightly, its volume decreases. Remember, density is equal to mass divided by volume. So if the density goes up, uh, the volume has to decrease. And you, well, you can see that from, it, it, as it goes from one degrees to three degrees, the density is increasing. That, that's what this axis is, it's density. So it goes from one degrees to three degrees. The, the density is increasing, means that the volume is decreasing. And uh, that's the answer, it will contract slightly. Okay, the ideal gas law. Uh, Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to uh, the 23 particles per mole. A mole is equal to the, uh, the mass divided by molar mass. Uh, one mole of any substance is that amount of substance. Uh, as many particles as are in the atoms of a, uh, that contains as many particles as there are uh, in 12 grams of the isotope carbon 12. Okay, let's, uh, a mole here uh, for carbon 12 is, time, is Avogadro's number five times 12, uh, 12 U, and one of those is 12, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 12, 24 grams, and you get, you multiply that with Avogadro's number divided by you, you get 12 grams. So the mass of the atom is the molar mass divided by Avogadro's number, 
if you uh, mass of helium is 6.64 times 10 to the 24th grams per atom. Uh, I'm not going to spend much time on this. Uh, we want to get on to the other chapters. Uh, these are some uh, relationships that uh, you might want to uh, remember. Pressure is proportional, is inversely proportional to volume. Uh, Boyle's law. Volume is directly proportional to temperature. That's Charles' law. And pressure is directly proportional uh, to uh, uh, temperature. Gay Lussac's law. Uh, okay. Um, so PV equals NRT. Uh, pressure times volume is equal to um, the number of moles times RT, uh, where R is 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, and R is equal to 0 0.0821 liters uh, atmospheres per mole Kelvin. You can use either of those for R. Uh, volume occupied by one mole of any ideal gas at atmospheric pressure uh, and at zero degrees C is 22.4 liters. Okay, N is equal to uh, the number of uh, molecules divided by Avogadro's number. PE, PV equals NRT, which is equal to N divided by NA over RT. PV equals NKBT, where KB is equal to uh, Boltzmann's constant. Uh, R divided by NA, which is 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. Uh, which of the following uh, could be associated with a temperature increase for a fixed amount of gas? A decrease in volume, a decrease in pressure, um, a decrease in both pressure and volume, an increase uh, in the pressure. And it's going to be, oops, um, it's going to be an increase in the pressure at constant volume. Okay, the number of molecules, okay. The, the ideal gas law holds under these conditions. The number of molecules in the gas is large and the average separation between them is large compared with their dimensions. The molecules obey Newton's laws of motion, but as a whole, they move randomly. The molecules interact only through short range forces during elastic collisions. Uh, the molecules make elastic collisions with the walls and all the molecules in the gas are identical. So these are very uh, idealized uh, conditions for the kinetic theory of gases. Um, and you can see uh, when you have just a molecule, the velocity will go in all directions, in the x, y, and z direction. We only look at it, uh, we separate it out just in the vx. So the momentum, the change in momentum, uh, MVX minus minus MVX is equal to two MVX. Remember, if you have a recoil, you get twice the uh, twice the velocity. So the force is equal to the change in momentum divided by delta T equals two MVX delta T. Delta T is equal to two uh, D divided by the V over X. So the force equals MVX. Uh, and Vx squared divided by D, and the average uh, Vx squared is equal to V1x squared, uh, you know, on through Vnx divided by N. So the force is equal to N times M mass divided by D times the average uh, velocity squared. Uh, you can go through this derivation, the bottom line is the pressure is equal to two-thirds NV times the um, average kinetic energy, the one-half MV uh, V squared, average V squared. Uh, so PV equals two-thirds N, one-half MV uh, squared, PV equals NKBT. Um, let's get down to the the bottom here, the kinetic energy, the total kinetic energy is equal to three halves NRT. Okay, for, uh, the uh, energy for a monatomic gas, U is equal to three halves NRT. The root mean square velocity is equal to the square root of the average uh, velocity squared, which is the square root of uh, three KBT divided by M 
equals uh, 3RT divided by capital M. And that all comes down to what, about 1.9 uh, times 10 to the 3 meters per second. Now there's a distribution of, of uh, speeds and it represented by these, these, uh, uh, these curves. And you can see that the, uh, the area under the curve is uh, equal to N. The total number of molecules in this case is N equals to 10 to the fifth. Now you can see it's, this is for, uh, uh, for uh, two different temperatures, the same gas, but for two different temperatures, and you have different velocities. Let me uh, make sure I'm looking at the uh, the right gas. Uh, I lost uh, my place on my iPad. And that's because I'm not keeping up. There it is. Uh, the table is the RMS speeds for various uh, molecules, and the figure is for nitrogen. For nitrogen at two different temperatures, at 300 K and at 900 K, and the VMP is most probable. The VAV is the average velocity, and the VRMS is the root mean square velocity. And you can see that uh, the uh, most probable uh, velocity is less than the average velocity, which is less than the RMS velocity. So uh, for N2 and CO, the uh, velocity is, the RMS is 511, uh, 511 uh, meters per second. Uh, oops, okay. Let's, uh, so this is the Maxwell speed distribution um, for nitrogen at, two, at 300 to 900 K. Uh, let's say that a gas decreases in temperature, but its volume remains constant during this process. What happens to its internal energy? The gas decreases in temperature, um, the internal energy is going to decrease. Also, let's look, uh, let's go uh, back. Um, if that's the, the, the internal energy. Uh, U is equal to three halves NRT. Well, the T goes down, so is the energy. That's gonna go down too. So the internal energy decrease, decreases. And here are some summary slides of some of the important uh, equations that we've covered. And that's it for uh, uh, chapter 10.